the Sunningdale Golf Club, Berkshire, England, a scenically beautiful heather-strewn test of golf nestled in the English countryside. A match over 18 holes between five times British Ryder Cup and Canada Cup representative, winner of the British Masters and the German, Belgian and Brazilian Opens, Bernard Hunt of England. And one of the steadiest young touring professionals on the PGA circuit, winner of the Azalea and Seattle Opens and of the Sam Snead Festival, Dave Marr of the United States. In the ladder for our match. Once you've had a look at these narrow ribbon-like fairways, you realize that unless your driver is under complete control, you'd be better off enjoying a game of English darts in the clubhouse. I've never seen a course that rewarded good tee shots more or punished bad ones so severely. And the punishment? It's Heather. Beautiful purple Heather everywhere you look. It's easy enough to get into, but how about getting out? Fortune. Bernard, uh, you've played this Sunningdale before in competition, have you not? Oh, yes. I've played here quite a few times, uh, George. I was talking to your caddy, and he told me you had a fair round here one time. Yes, I had a 62. But uh, it was wow. in very uh, <laughs> in excellent conditions, and uh, the course wow. was running very well. And I think I had a few putts running pretty well, too. Gene, we're all set to go underway, and uh, here is Bernard Hunt. Well, you know, he's been on the Ryder Cup team about five times, and he's got a three-quarter swing with a slightly closed face. As a matter of fact, more than slightly. He's a terrific hitter. Well, he's a big fellow, Gene. He's about 6'2", and weighs about uh, 190 and 95. Very strong. Well, there was that three-quarter swing, and he has drawn the ball a little bit from right to left, but he aimed it over on the safe side of the fairway. Got a pretty good kick. He'll be down close to those bunkers on the left, but I doubt very much that he hit it far enough to reach him. Big opening tee shot, though. Well, with a very hard baked-out fairway and a good following wind of about 20 to 25 miles an hour and the small British ball, both tee shots were really poked down the fairway, better than 300 yards. I'd say maybe 320. And on this long par five hole, both players are going to hit seven irons, and Bernard Hunt is just slightly away. Danger here to fly the ball over the green. He's hit it, carried it high in the air. It hits short, takes one tremendous bounce, goes toward the back of the green, and trickles over the green. And that was almost predictable with the following win. As we mentioned, Bernard Hunt uh, not only drove the green, but almost drove through the green. Stopped just a couple of feet short of going in that uh, little pot bunker at the back. So he's putting for an eagle, too, from 45 feet, leaving the pin in. No penalty under the RNA rules for hitting him on a tennis flag stick. Starts it out the right and breaks down, 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 and misses by inches on the right. A gorgeous approach putt. So he has just, uh, just a little tap in there for birdie three. Man, he's off and running. He has birdied the first three holes in a row. Holes. Bernard, you okay. ever start before with three birdies? Well, it has happened, but uh, it's very nice to happen today. It's, uh, you know, helped me quite a bit, isn't it? Oh, those are three beautiful birdies. Though, while I've got you here, I want to ask you a question. I noticed off the tee there, you hood your driver in and you take a three-quarter swing. Could you tell us why you do that? Yes, well, it's, uh, I find that the three-quarter swing is a very helpful thing for me, and I think that uh, I would advocate it for most tall golfers. It, uh, it helps the control, and uh, it stops a lot of body movement. And as for uh, hooding the club in, I use that because uh, I'm a little shut face. I shut the face up and then keep it open going through. I can follow through with the left hand far more and keep the face open, keep the ball on the line. Well, that's a good point. A lot of you tall fellas, when you go out, just watch Bernard Hunt with his three-quarter swing. Okay, now here's Bernard Hunt, and uh, you notice that where Marr uses a, a wooden tee, uh, Hunt simply scuffs up a bit of earth and uh, places the ball on top of it. It's a great hole, not only a difficult tee shot, but an extremely difficult second shot, as we'll see a little later on. is forward, not quite as far to the right as the right of Dave Marr, the right of the direction marker. Now, he hits the fairway and takes a kick to the left and runs down out of sight over the knoll, and whether he stayed in the fairway or made the edge of the rough, uh, we don't know quite yet. 
Well, Bernard Hunt's forward tee shot caught the right to left fall of the fairway and finished in light rough just off the fairway, about 230 yards off the tee. He is completely blind. He can't see the green or the pin or anything else. And he's going to try to take an eight iron and hit it up over the trees. He'll also have to hook it, hit it from right to left to get it on this green. It looks like he did exactly that. Hit the right to left shot, carried it just to the short front uh, part of the green and finished on the lower level. And that's a good shot considering where he was. Missed the putting surface with his second shot. Bernard Hunt flies 90 feet from the pen in the fringe off to the right of the 10th green. He lies, of course, two on this par five hole. He has a nine iron. We'll try to carry this ball probably about two thirds of the distance to the pen because the greens are well watered here and rather soft. Particularly slow thing to judge. And I carried it just a little better than halfway. They're out. Holy mackerel, right on the lip. And that, if that had gone in, would have been for an Eagle three. The 17th at England Sunningdale Golf Course is another nerve-wracking tee shot hole with trees, rough, and bunkers on the right, a stand of evergreens on the left, and a narrow descending fairway which dog legs slightly to the right. It's a par four of 422 yards. With a strong crosswind blowing from right to left, Dave Marr, with the honor, aimed his driver down the dangerous right side in an attempt to shorten up the hole. The ball stayed below the level of the treetops, was not brought in by the wind, and found trouble. Bernard Hunt, with a golden opportunity staring him in the face, decided to lay up his tee shot safely with a forewood. He started his ball down the left side and tried to cut it back into the center of the fairway, but the intentional fade failed to come off, and he found difficulty of another sort. Well, Bernard Hunt, who's had a series of crucial shots to play during this match, finds himself faced with another. The wind against and from right to left, he's behind the evergreens with no straight shot at the pin. He has a five iron will aim and wait at the right turnover in the shot and try to deliberately hook it into the green. We shall see. Starts it way right. It is starting to come in, but I don't believe it will come in enough, will it? Yes, it will. Catches the right side of the green. What a gorgeous golf shot. Beautiful shot. And at a very critical moment. Well, Bernard Hunt hooked his tee shot so much here on 18 that he wound up in good shape. He carried it over the bunkers on the left, which are supposed to catch the pole tee shot, put it in the first fairway, and he has a completely open shot. The only thing is now he's got a full four iron left. And by going way over there, he added at least, I would say, two clubs to his second shot. He's hit a shot which does not look as though it will reach the green. It does not. Hit short, takes a big bounce. Goes past the pin on the left. Boy, almost dead in line, and he must have put it uh, better than 20 feet past the hole. And watch his opponent and see whether or not he can hold this putt for a win. At Bernard Hunt, two putts. He will also finish with a 70, and the match will be tied, and they will divide the prize money $2,500 each. So here's a putt that's worth a difference of $1,000. And he missed it by an inch and a half on the right side. But boy, did he give it a try. He'll tap in. They finish dead square. Two under par rounds of 70. And what a beautiful round of golf. Gene? Thank you, Gene. Well, that was a great round of golf. Both Thank of you. you. Gene. Thank you, you know, I've never seen a uh, match that was such a thriller. There was no more than two strokes between both of you from the first hole on. And I want to tell you, you hit your shots. For instance, you missed two greens, you missed two or three. It was a great mm -hmm. round of golf. I want to congratulate both of you. Thank, Thank you, Gene. Gene. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bernard, I enjoyed playing with you, and I'm <laughs> a little too tough. I'm <laughs> glad I got out with a half myself. Yeah. Well, I feel exactly the same way about you, Dave. I think you hit the ball wonderfully well. You hit nearly all the greens in the... Uh, right number. I've done a bit of scrambling around and I'm delighted <laughs> to get a half with you.